come back to. So one of the things that the um, archivist uh, that uh, David started off with this morning was to talk about some of the famous um, uh, individuals that came to this country as an immigrant and what they have been able to accomplish. And I, and I think as um, with Stuart in the previous panel, that was talk, talking about stories. And so we know that, um, it, that the larger, um, um, that the larger uh, community uh, contributes to the economy of this country. I think one of the reasons that the state of California is doing so much better is that we have a large um, a group that works. So can you maybe just talk a little bit from your perspective of what um, immigrants have uh, contributed from your perspective and putting perhaps a face onto the many ways in which we are a much stronger country as a result of, of those uh, contributions? We do have um, a workforce um, investment um, a program, uh, the workforce, and we help immigrants and refugees to understand the work here in United States. Immigrants and refugees, they bring a lot of good things with them. Maybe they're not ready for the job that they were looking for when they came to United States, but we always tell them, you need to start somewhere where you can be able to provide to your family and to yourself. But we help them, if they're engineers, we help them to get into jobs in the engineering firms. And just to get them into that job, they don't have to be an engineers, but at least in the same environment. So they can be able to listen to the vocabulary, to how, do, how they be able to uh, um, assimilate and learn, and then uh, that company can help them to become uh, or maybe add, uh, get their license here and work. So we try to help the immigrants and refugees to be in their field and plug them in, in their field. And I remember about um, 15 years ago, there was an amazing program was funded by California Endowment. Uh, it's the Welcome Back program and it did help a lot of immigrants and refugees to get into the workforce in their own field. So for nurses, we, get, we, we try to plug them into, get them into just to take a six-week course. We help them with the financial assistance to get them into eight uh, uh, course weeks, uh, eight weeks, uh, to, just to get a license so they can be in the same field. Although they were in registered nurse in their own countries, or they were a doctors, but we always try to get them into their field. That's what we've been really, really successful with that. Great. Yeah, I think, um, as the speakers noted earlier, you know, immigrants are net contributors to the economy. There, there's been so many reports, publications, uh, uh, testimonies, witness stories around how uh, immigrants contribute to the economy. California alone, you know, we provided so many rights and protections to immigrants in the state, and what has it done? It hasn't, the state hasn't caved in because of that. Our state is thriving because of it. You know, my organization, if you go to our website, we, every two years, we produce a report with the U USC Center for Immigrant Integration Studies called the Immigrant Contributions Report, and there it lists everything that immigrants contribute from the economy to to, to, cult, to culture, to, to, to tech, you know? So that, that's self-evident almost that I won't be belabor it. But a very, if you want a story, here's a story. A few years ago, uh, my husband's a high school teacher. Uh, and this student of his from Ukraine, he came here when he was 12. Hardly spoke any English, but managed to survive the, the, the Los Angeles Unified School District system. Uh, became basically a professor of Russian literature at UCLA, uh, is now one of the most well-known translators in the world. His name is Boris Dralyuk. He's won awards on translation, uh, and recently he became the executive editor of the Los Angeles Review Books. So, you know, I, I, 
there's tons of stories. And who, but who do we need to convince? Uh, my challenge to, to, to this forum is let us bring this conversation to places where it hasn't happened. Because what we need to do to get that amazing immigrant story across is to help people imagine what being an immigrant is. Until we can reach that place where Americans exist in their minds and they create pictures of what immigrants are, uh, we may be able to get across those folks in the rural areas who may not necessarily have voted for Trump because they're uh, who, or may, who may have voted for Trump, not necessarily because they're anti-immigrant, as was stated earlier, but because of those other reasons already stated. Those are good people to talk to because they may be convinced that this, you know, this is this is still us. You know, we we fundamentally, hopefully, will not be changed by this experience. And if we are able to continue to create that narrative of us as a country who has shared values of fairness, liberty, and justice for all, then we, we stand a fighting chance, I hope. So 